Senator John McCain there announcing his choice of Alaska Governor Sarah Palin to be his running mate in the last presidential race. Within hours of that announcement, members of a private email group called Journo List, many members in the mainstream media, swapped ideas for effective talking points in order to help defeat McCain and Palin and help elect Barack Obama president. Jeffrey Tubin of The New Yorker wrote this, what a joke. I always thought that some part of McCain doesn't want to be president, and this choice proves my point. Welcome back, Admiral Stockdale. From Suzanne Nossel with Human Rights Watch, I think it is and can be spun as a profoundly sexist pick. Women should feel umbrage at the idea that their votes can be attracted just by putting a woman, any woman, on the ticket, no matter her qualifications or views. That's excellent. If enough people on this list Right, that the pick is sexist, you'll have the networks debating it for days, and that negates the single thing Palin brings to the ticket. So responded Jonathan Stein, a reporter for Mother Jones. Andrea, the uh, Daily Caller exposed these emails, been all over the list. Uh, one blogger said they are more than a smoking gun, they're like a crime scene. You agree? Oh, absolutely. I think that there's always uh, been on the right a deep distrust of the mainstream media. They've always assumed that they've leaned left, and now this is the proof positive. And I think when you look at the list, some of them were not really surprised. This is a very inside baseball game. But a couple of the names, and I'll just pull two by example, Ben Smith and Mike Allen. So my jaw didn't drop. They're both from Politico when I heard that they were on this site. But these are two reporters who I would say were responsible for really driving the coverage of the 2008 election. So my question is now, if the majority of these uh, journalist employees and their editors and publishers are leaning left, where's the accountability? How do we take them serious going forward, or do we take everything with a triple helping of salt? What about that? Mike Allen, formerly of Time Magazine, now with the Politico, supposed to be an independent, nonpartisan website, uh, very widely read in Washington and elsewhere. He's on this list, and when he reads some of this stuff, should he have jumped off? Well, first of all, I'd say, is there any evidence that he read it? We don't have any evidence of that. I think a lot of us are on email lists. I mean, I can tell you that emails go back and forth all the time in my box that I never look at. I don't even know what they say. So that's one. Um, I think, you know, the other thing is, um, you're sort of assuming that people don't have judgment. I mean, I think Mike Allen, I mean, I have a lot of respect for him. I have a lot of respect for Ben Smith, and I really don't think we should drag them through the mud here. You know, I think that they are good reporters. I've known Ben for a long time through New York politics, and they, they have the ability to look at this and say, guess what, someone from Mother Jones or someone from the nation says something, I know they're liberals. Oh, Kirsten, I've known I'm Ben not, Smith from I'm New not, York politics, I'm not, I'm not, too. I'm not that going is to, judgment. I'm Why not, be on a site like but this? But who even knows if he even looked That's at it? That's just a dumb no, thing to do. Stop. Just a second. If, he, if they were offered the opportunity to go on a site that was started by Jim Pinkerton and Cal Thomas and Charles Krauthammer, they would be on it. I but, guarantee it. Whether they would spend time looking at it is a separate issue. So let's just be careful about smearing issue. people who we don't see any evidence have done anything wrong. That is the point, though, Cal. You had to be invited to be a part of this list. Right. I'm Cal, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> they had to be. They had to be invited to be part of this list. Well, again, I, I look. I'm on all sorts of lists, and if I were held responsible for what somebody else writes, I'd be in a lot of trouble. However, let's hold people responsible for what they, in fact, do write. For example, my favorite quote from this whole thing, and hats off to the Daily Caller for, Call for breaking this: is Spencer Ackerman, then at the Washington Independent, now at Wired, said, "This is a quote: Find a right winger and smash him through a plate glass window." Take a snapshot of the bleeding mess and send it out as a Christmas card. Okay. Let the uh, right know it needs to live in a state of constant fear. Of course, now, that, he of wrote course that. that's horrible. But who is Spencer Ackerman? Can you please inform people? Because he, honestly, he, I'd never even he, heard of him. He, he I writes mean, for he the writes Washington. Like, he's I know, the, the idea that he, idea that he is in charge of some liberal media conspiracy is ridiculous. I mean, it's I, like he's well, a, my, he is a he he is somebody that a lot of people I know who work in liberal politics have literally never heard of. If there was a group of judges <laughs> on Judge O least, they would be <laughs> they would be implicated. They would be a tribe. They would be. I mean. This is ridiculous. But, but Such you know, a but surprise. There's liberal journalists there. Exchange ideas. Liberal Come on. Expresses liberal views. Is this, these aren't liberal views. These, are, these, are, these, are, these are ideas, Judith. Uh -huh. No, no, no. These, these are, are violence views. No, no. I, and, I totally disagree with what he said. It was horrible. But I'm just saying that's that's literally the worst one you can take out of all of this. Hold on. Well, well, I don't know. I've got more. Wait a minute. There are more. I urge people to go and read Ezra Klein's explanation of a lot of this stuff and get the full picture of it because I really think this is being. I still think women. I still think that it's hard to explain Sarah Spitz, who is 
is supposedly not a commentator. If you're a commentator, fine, say whatever you want in an email that you assume is not going to leak or not, even if it's to 400 people. But if you're Sarah Spitz, let's not say that she would laugh loudly like a maniac and watch his eyes bug out this if isn't Rush Limbaugh this isn't were just having petty a heart gossip. attack. They're not just <laughs> trying to limit one point of view. They're actually trying to exclude and impugn the right in order to propel well, their candidate, well, Barack Spencer, Obama. How do they Spencer, have the this power to do blatant. this? I don't understand. Like, Chris Hayes at the Nation, this is seriously? I mean, I respect him, and I think I like his work. But he's I, I, I think if I were on a KKK on. website, I, mean, I guarantee you I wouldn't be sitting at this table KKK right now. They, they, they called it earlier. The they said, if, yeah, we, if, I am. We, if we blog it and, e and tweet it and email it back and forth to each other enough, hate. the it's network news will pick it up. That was exactly the way the food chain works. Spencer Ackerman, the guy that you say you haven't heard of, he's getting his profile boosted by this show, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, he was apparently concerned about some of the early reports on Reverend Wright, President uh, Obama's former pastor when he was still a candidate. According to the caller, Spencer Ackerman suggested the best way to combat criticism of Reverend Wright was to accuse those who raised the issue of racism. If the right forces us all to either defend Wright or tear him down, no matter what we choose, we lose the game they've put upon us, he wrote. Yep. Instead, take one of them, Fred Barnes, Carl Rove, who cares, and call them racist. And that's despicable. That's totally despicable. But do you notice how you keep quoting the same person? Spencer yes. Ackerman. I mean, this mm -hmm. is this is my this is my criticism of journalism now that we take a couple examples and anecdotes and we then say that all people are a certain way and let's impugn all these people. You know what? If you have a problem with Spencer Ackerman, have a problem with Spencer Ackerman, but don't attack Ben Smith and Mike Allen. I mean, they didn't do anything wrong. I'm and not I think attacking we, them. I'm questioning they their didn't. judgment, Kirsten. They didn't I'm write anything. Their oh, no, judgment. They did they not write part. anything. I mean, That's, I don't. Am I going to be held the responsible for all the emails that are in my email no, box they're, right they're, now? They're, they're, I mean, I, I really. It's a judgment issue. It absolutely is not a judgment yes, issue. Yes, it is. You no, cannot not. be a part of a site like that. If you know you have real judgment, you pull yourself off if you're supposed to be biased because you have to avoid. I cannot even wait for the day that the conservative you list have comes to avoid out. That's Kirsten. all I got to say. Kirsten, you have to avoid even the appearance okay. of impropriety. Why don't you really the, the, the Daily Caller will eventually. I'm not supposed to be fair and balanced, remember? The Daily Caller will eventually release all of what they have. As I'm sure it'll be thousands, if not millions, of, of emails, and we'll know exactly who wrote what. We That's can wait right. that. However, quite a few names. We can put them on the Fox Newswatch website if we have to. <laughs> we're, we're very much involved in all the things we're talking about, not just Spencer Ackerman. Time for a break, but first, go to our website for more on the journalist controversy and the discussions you can't see on TV that erupt in here during our breaks. You can see